Okay, this is two different axial images of the cervical spine, okay? So if you have a choice of which one would you like to do for evaluating the cervical spine, for looking at the cord as well as the disc lesions, uh, would you do uh, a plain axial T2, which is the one which is above, uh, or would you do a special gradient sequence, uh, gradient T2 sequence, which is uh, available with, with most of the vendors now, for imaging the cervical spinal cord and the discs okay so it's called merge in uh, one of the vendors and another one it's called medic and i think there's one more called mffe i think uh, in one of the other vendors so if i were to choose between uh, two of these uh, which one would i take for imaging routinely if i am time bound and i have only a limited time to do a set of sequences for my cervical spine study i would be doing a sagittal t2 i would be doing an axial 2d merge or medic what you would call it which is this special sequence and i would do a coronal stir okay which would be three different planes uh, three different sequences but if you have a choice it would be nice if you could do both a regular axial t2 as well as the special gradient uh, t2 weighted sequence what is the difference look at the difference is the main difference is in the pulsation artifacts in the csf the csf which should have normally been like a clear t2 bright signal due to the pulsation artifact appears dark in a normal t2 weighted image so you tend to misread it as lesions, bleed, whatever. You can you can get a lot number of wrong diagnosis looking at a normal T2. Uh, the other thing is the contrast resolution of the spinal cord. If you look at the spinal cord, you are much better off picking up uh, lesions or bleed or anything that's happening inside the spinal cord in a special gradient T2 weighted image like the merge or the medic. These are the reasons why I would go for this special sequence for a cervical spine study. If you have the choice to do the 3D version of it as well, do it.